do molecular physics in the Academy of Science, Poland. And then he moved to in Japan uh, for a postdoc and to Karlsruhe uh, in Germany with Gerson. And uh, then he returned to Poland again to, to the Institute of Molecular Physics. And then he got there a permanent position and got his permanent professor there. And for me, it's a pleasure to have him. Yeah. Well, his background, all of you know that it's a lot of the and Yes, I find to trash. Thank you very much. I would like to thank uh, Rosa Lopez again for the invitation, the opportunity to be here and discuss with, with you, and also uh, David Sanchez. And um, so today, <coughs> I would like to talk about uh, some groups of effects which we worked out somehow before. And these results are a little bit older, so we, we worked on, on them, uh, I think, till two or three years ago. But uh, the reason why I want to uh, explain you this is this, like that, that there is some new experiment and uh, in a little bit different regime which uh, compared to what, what I will discuss with you uh, today. But I think most of the physics which we can somehow learn from. Maybe we should leave the door uh, So, so, uh, okay. so what, what is important? That So, so all this important that there is a new experiment that probably some of this uh, spin precession, spike spin dynamics is possible to see a little bit different regime, but probably some of this effect are somehow similar. So probably we, we will start some new project on it, and uh, and it is for some of us it's good to, to refresh this all knowledge to, to understand them and physics and more easy to, to work on some on this particular experiment. So uh, uh, so what is motivation to work in this field? So uh, you see that it is related with the speed and quantum dots. So uh, probably you are familiar with speed turning. So we, we, use not, we can use not only the fact that electrons and wire is a charge, but there is also a spin. And it could be quite useful. We can even do some electronic devices for using this FX. And 2007, there was a Nobel Prize even for this GMR, which is related to some of to, to, to the speed running. So this is one motivation. Another motivation is that in a, a small uh, island of, of, of metal or such a quasi-atoms, which we call a quantum dot, usually we can control very well what is going on with electrons. So we can take out one electron, we can put another, and so on. So the question is, is it possible by you since we can control so well electrons on the dot, is it possible also using uh, the same setup to control some of the speed of the single electron? So it is some, some motivation, and of course there is plenty of approaches and so on. And uh, and our our system, our, our idea is quite simple. So we try to, to use ferromagnetic gates in order to, to couple charge and speed degrees of freedom. And because if you put some, if you consider some transport in ferromagnetic system, there is polarized transport. So, so using this ferromagnetic beads, we can somehow inject the spin to our ball. But I will also show you that we can read out the spin information, and we can also somehow manipulate the spin. And uh, so this work was done in collaboration mainly with uh, 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 Matthias Brown and uh, Jürgen Koenig. So it's already wrong, so he is in this book now, and Matthias Braun is in Aachen, if I remember well. And Jürgen is, uh, is a full professor now in this book. And, uh, and OK, and since we, we, we it's, it's somehow the quantum dots and ferromagnetic fields in different regimes are somehow our main topic, so this collaboration is with, with many groups, with many people, so it's already several years. But today, I will concentrate on weak coupling, so there will be some connection to combo, but I will talk about so-called sequential tunneling regime, and even in this, let's say, 
criteria of regime, you can find some lines that are related to the speed and the system. Okay, so um, so uh, so first, uh, I will explain you the motivation why it is interesting to study some spin dynamics using uh, uh, using uh, uh, transport. So there's such a famous experiment, which is somehow there's also some discussion. There is no agreement by it. So there are several models which explain it. So people use STM to measure electron spin resonance and. Uh, then I will discuss a little bit what, how it looks like transport the magnetic tunnel junction if we c consider some uh, non-collinear orientation. Then I will start to discuss, I will introduce the quantum dot, I will try to connect them to the ferromagnetic leads, and I will suggest some simple model which take into account the presence of ferromagnetic leads. And then I will start to discuss the basic behavior of this uh, dot in such a situation. So I mean spin accumulation, some exchange interaction, spin, to spin torque, and spin precession. And then I will also jump to some theoretical prediction like uh, Hanle effect due to some spin precession. And also I will show you some calculation for uh, high frequency noise in the, in the system where I think somehow analogical to this setup we, we suggest in the, our system by uh, measuring the current noise, one can detect electron spin resonance of the system without using microwaves somehow, just external magnetic field and, and noise, and we don't need microwave and still can get it. And, but what is also important is that, okay, we are talking about spin, but in some sense, this model is more generic because in, uh, uh, we have, it is somehow generic model for any two level system. So also, uh, Ramon has a paper about about two dots. About uh, there is also some good paper about qubit. So basically, if we have a physics two level system and we consider dynamics, it's very very useful to make a mapping on spin model because then we can introduce uh, so-called uh, log equation, which we are somehow very familiar for magnetic resonances, which in fact is a classical uh, equation, and then we can really understand the dynamics. Is Example, it is one of the most natural language. So even even people consider I don't know two level system or two two dot system or this analog ring, I think it, to, to better understand the physics is always somehow nice to to try to find the connection to this pseudo spin and then try to discuss the physics in the pseudo spin system and then at the end make some coming back and, and try to understand the terms of charge or other degrees of freedom. So so it is, we can also look at it as a Broad spectrum of, of two level system physics. So, so, probably similar ideas you can find in different papers related to different objects. Okay, good. So, uh, there is such an uh, experiment which was uh, done in the beginning of the 90s. And uh, uh, so, there was, uh, it was quite controversial. So, people had a problem to repeat it. In 2002, people succeed, there, there is a group which succeeds to repeat it, but there is also several other groups which do not succeed. So, but somehow the idea is maybe nice and it's important to analyze it, and then we can somehow see connection to, to our investigation. So, it, so this is standard SDM setup. So we have some surface, we put some molecules which has spin one half effectively. And uh, now we put STM tip and we can measure the transport of the current to such object. And uh, okay, and now we, we apply some external magnetic field, not, not so strong, so plus 200 uh, Gauss. And uh, what, what do they measure? They measure uh, the noise of this current which is flowing through the system. So basically it means that uh, they, they detect the current some simplified pictures that detect the current as, as, as a function of time, they make a Fourier transform of it, yes. And, and then they look at power spectra of this noise, and they at some uh, frequency which corresponds to the larval frequency of, for the spin which processes this external magnetic field, they see some resonance with very high uh, signal to noise ratio. And uh, so it looks quite, quite fantastic because usually, in the standard magnetic resonance setup, we need 
10 to 10 numbers of spin in order to get any signal because we detect this resonance by uh, by magnetic metals. So we have some coils and we just the, we just make detection of we need to reduce some current in the system. So we really need huge amount of speeds in order to, 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 to get to get any signal. And here, if, if it will work, we can get sensitivity of single speed. So, so for example, we can we can put some big protein, and if we will be able to locally look at such a resonance, it could be important because then we can see how the speed spin talk to other speeds with this interaction and so on. So usually we can do it by NMR or ESR, but then we need a signal from from a crystal where we have plenty of the same molecules and we can just see some average signal in here. But some so from some proteins we are not able to make a crystal so then if you look this this technique will work then it will be nice because we can locally somehow detect this identical resonance. And uh, so there's some Details which are maybe not important, and the important fact is that they, they change the value of magnetic field, and they were able to show that the speed position is somehow shifted. Yeah, so they, they measure from from the slope here. You can find the g factor, which was roughly uh, two. However, uh, so what what is not not uh, uh, what is problematic in this, this experiment is that usually in order to, to see some spin dynamics and, and charge sector you need some some you need to translate it somehow. So you need some spin dependent effects, some spin orbit and so on. And here they don't put any spin, uh, any ferromagnetic part, so they just put this and it somehow works. So so there is several proposal of mechanics for, for this effect and in some sense we could say that our model consider that we have uh, let's say STM team and a background is ferromagnetic, we can control the direction of magnetization, magnetization independently of both of them, and, and we can measure the transport of such a system. So it's not exactly what we see here, but, but at least it's a problem where, we, where the spin dynamics and or translation from spin to the charge sector is somehow clear and, and well established. Okay, and uh, so I was asked by also to prepare some general, some general uh, slide. So it's a slide which explain what is the quantum dots for uh, those which are not uh, familiar with that. So usually, if, if we take some, uh, let's say our, uh, let's say uh, usual scale uh, devices, electronic devices, and if we make it very small, we can expect some quantum effects. So it's not like this; we can scale it. And uh, this effects are related with the charge quantization, so our electric current is, is quantized, and each electron has some uh, electron, single electron charge. And what is, what is also important is that uh, these electrons are kind of waves, so we can say that there is also the size of the object is small, we have size quantization, so we have discrete electronic levels. Yes, and so usually this quantum dose it could be two dimensional electron gas with some small area which are somehow separated, but it could be also some piece of, of metal. And uh, and what is important that uh, uh, this dot has some discrete energy levels, and uh, if this level is, uh, separation is quite large, especially compared to temperature, we can think about quantum dots as a kind of artificial atom. And, uh, and basically, <coughs> we, we attach to this quantum dots to leads, and we can measure the transport, and usually we measure the transport transport a single level. So such a single level model is quite resonant to describe the properties of such artificial atom which is connected to, to, to electrons now. Okay, and and but but the practical realization of the system could be very different, so it could be spin polarized STM, but uh, people also are able to, to put uh, ultra small it's, this grain has only three nanometers uh, diameter. And they can apply as they can able to put two electrodes, and here one of them is ferromagnetic, and they can also see some spin effect here. And another system is the, 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 the people are able to apply to attach metal electrodes to some single molecules and observe transport, and they also able to put uh, in this paper ferromagnetic leads to, to single C60 molecule. 
and it is also possible the carbon nanotubes or 1D systems are also very nice because then the uh, electron separation could be much larger, but still this object seems uh, it is quasi 1D, it has only little number of electrons that behave like a quantum ball. Okay, and so first, uh, just as a little bit as a motivation, I will show you some results obtained in the Dandrav group in Cornell, where they measure the transport in a very low temperature in the particle, which is only 3 nanometers. And this is metallic, but it still has quantization of, of levels. So, uh, so level separation is uh, one tenth of a meter to volt. So if we put it so low temperature, we are still in the limit. So this metallic particle can behave like a quantum dot. And you can see it really transport to a single level. And they use one thermagnetic links, one normal. And what is fun is that already in the system they see some spin effect, so it's, uh, it's, which is related to spin accumulation. So this setup is a little bit complicated, but the most important is that you have some non-linearity. So you have different current for high bias, for positive and negative uh, bias. So here you see that this difference, and this could be, uh, and this is related to spin accumulation of our dot. Uh, no equilibrium spin accumulation on our dot. So we have kind of spin locate if we consider transport in one direction here. But I will explain you it on the next transparency. So 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 it's some motivations that really we can consider quantum dots, which is two level and the speaking is due to Zima speaking and we can we can inject spin from outside and create some some no equilibrium population of, in, in, the, in the spin set somehow. Okay, so now Let's uh, introduce uh, what means the spin accumulation. So uh, we can expect this effect even in a very simple system. So let's consider that we have such a, a double tunnel junction, even without long interaction, and we have two ferromagnetic leads and one normal electrode here. And uh, so now we can consider what, how, look, how it will looks like the transport in such a system depending on relative orientation of magnetization of both sides. And uh, so first, uh, and what, is, what is important is that this is one of the effects which was also studied by these two guys. And this is one of the, uh, let's say, crucial effects for speed running. And they, these two, uh, Albert Fair and Peter Greenberg, they got the Nobel Prize in 2007 for Say this GMR effect and what practically for start for somehow starting this field of speed products and so on. So coming back to this example, we can consider two situations when these two leads are parallel and anti-parallel. And what we can see that uh, for a parallel situation we have very huge current for majority spins. We have smaller current for minority spins, but nothing special happened on, on, on the dot. But if we consider anti-parallel orientation, what you can see is that we, we, we start some spin accumulation. So it, it is no equilibrium effect. So it is only work if we have some bias difference. But practically, this means that we increase the um, local chemical potential for spin up, and we decrease chemical potential for, for spin down. So we can create such a stationary situation where we have two chemical potential different for spin up and down. And, the, and, and how we can understand it? Because for majority spins, it's, uh, uh, it's uh, easy to come to the dot, but it's difficult to go out. And for minority spins, it's difficult to come, but it's easy to go out. Yes. And, and because of that, you, uh, and what is funny is that here, if the situation is asymmetric, we have the same current for spin up and down. And here, we have really spin polarized current, so it's very huge for spin up. But, but uh, since it is the same easy to come, uh, to come and to go out, we have practically, we have no spin up imbalance for this situation. Which will be so, and we can also use the same mechanics to inject a spin for two level quantum dot. Because if we put uh, anti-parallel uh, anti orientation and we put the dot, we can make some different population of spin up or down. Even we have speed, uh, we have no Zeeman field just by applying the current or bias to the to the system, which would be very important for our discussion. So, so it is, so this picture is somehow it's it's a little bit maybe uh, strange, but it 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 is like that for anti-parallel addition, we can really we can really inject this to our system. 
Okay, what, what is also important that experimentally people can control magnetization of uh, two ferromagnetic electrodes. So here is a ferromagnetic tunnel junction without any dots, but but we can change the angle between both magnetization. So so this is and we, we can measure the transfer to such a system. So here you see this is resistance as a function of angle between two directions of magnetization. And we can make a very simple calculation using quantum mechanics, the, some rotation matrix, so it's like a Feynman book. And we can calculate it, and we can find that this magneto resistance in such a system should depend on, so the, the change of current in such a system should depend according to some cosine uh, law. So it's a, let's say, cosine function. And we can interpret the situation that we have some polarizer, we send some spins in one direction, and the other leads is the analyzer, and so it's like this polarized light. And, and because of that, we, we depending on the angle, we have higher or lower uh, current. So practically, we can do the same game uh, with, with lights, yes, but here with, uh, with electrons and taking the cons of the, the uh, spin. And, but this experiment is not, not easy, but we can see that really it works and technologically it's possible to plot arbitrary angle between the And now, but now we are interested in a situation where we, when we will put some quantum dot between these two ferromagnetic leads. Yeah. So, so we can, we want to create some of spins there and we want to make some manipulation of it using just the current. Yes. So, uh, so we need to, uh, to, to start with some Hamiltonian, with some model. So we use the simplest possible model. So it's a so-called Anderson model. And uh, so this part which described the dot is just standard. So we have a uh, single level dot, which this level could be occupied by up or down electrons. We have strong Coulomb interaction. So uh, if level position is here, uh, we in all uh, we see that energy which we need to add to add another electron is quite large. So so if we put the level here, this level could be occupied just by single electron. And if the single electron, it means that this electron has an unpaired spin, and then we have a spin, but it, it is just paramagnetic spin. So it's uh, it, it's not it, 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 the average has, has no any direction. It's pointing in any direction if we have normal leads. And, uh, and okay, and we have two ferromagnetic leads where, we, and we can rotate one of, of the leads, so we can put arbitrary angle between both leads magnetization. And so we need to put, uh, and, and uh, so description is, let's say, a standard one, uh, so it's just some Fermi liquid here. But what is not really ours, we, we, we have different somehow quantization axis for left and right leads. Yes, because we have different direction of magnetization. And usually in order to start some calculation, we need to choose one quantization axis, arbitrary, but, and then we need to do all calculation in, 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 in this one system. So I will show you how we can do it. But what is, what is important is that uh, we have some tunnel barrier between this quantum dots and the leads. We consider four possible states, so zero, up, down, and double, and we consider that during tunneling process spin is conserved, and we will uh, we consider recoupling, so-called se sequential tunneling. So we have no no uh, some high order process, no co tunneling. Just the only process is possible that electron enters the dot, it will stay sometimes, and then go out, and so on. No, no like that there is two correlated process of electrons, or no no quantum physics or nothing with that. So from point of view of charge transport, it's, it's very simple and so on. And we can also introduce some effective uh, uh, spin polarization. It's, it's described as spin asymmetry. So it's, this spin, so it's defined as a difference for density or, or, or um, uh, hybridization function for up and down. So if we have normally this, this guy is just zero. If we have full spin polarized, this spin polarization is, uh, is one. OK? And now, uh, in order to perform some calculation, we need to choose uh, some quantization access. And we, uh, so that here we have this two ferromagnetic, uh, uh, two uh, magnetization direction for left and right leads. 
and we decide to choose a quantization axis which is out of plane, which is a little bit maybe not intuitive because one will say, okay, let's make it this x axis. But why it is good to choose this z axis? Because then the system is mapping directly to a robot bomb ring with two dots. And I will show you this mapping on next transparency, but but uh, how we can now understand how we can construct uh, Hamiltonian in, uh, in, in SOE. So pl uh, plus and minus is a, uh, is a, bar, a basis of, uh, for electron up and down uh, for a particular R leads. And now if we will send such an electron, let's say, with, with a direction of this left lead, it, it will, if we consider quantization axis as a Z, it will be in superposition of space up and down with some phase, and, and in such a way it will contain information about the real position of the spin. Yes? So the superposition means that you will practically point out in, in different directions than, than uh, that. And, and then, but in some sense this corresponds to some rotation matrix, so what, it's just some intuitive picture of it. And again, we, we consider uh, first order, so the temperature is higher than, than gamma. So we have no Okay, and now, uh, so if we choose such a quantization axis, and if we consider how it looks like uh, 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 transition matrix elements, they are very similar to our bomb ring. So this is for spin up and up for both sides, and we see that we, we just this phi is uh, angle decreases to magnetization, and it exactly corresponds to the phase for for our bomb, bomb ring. And also, you can consider the, uh, the same situation for minus spin, so separately. So I think in part of our calculation, we just use it. We have just one spin component because it is enough, but they just non-collinear. And, and you can map this parallel anti-parallelization for particular uh, phase uh, shift and, uh, and a more, more ring, depending if you consider dynamic between up, up, or up, down, or and so on. So, and, and because of that, uh, it is quite, this mapping is quite important because at the end of my talk I will show you some new experiment which is done uh, uh, for a system which is uh, uh, rather um, uh, two-dot system and I will show that this physics which I will discuss today is probably what they see the interpretation to be this kind of stuff. Okay. okay, so now let's start some calculations, some theory. So uh, our uh, dot, which has just four charge states, we, we can uh, describe by uh, density matrix. And what is not standard now, that we need to consider also off diagonal elements of this density matrix. So and it's, it, and it means that we have we have some coherence in our system. We have we can have some dynamics and so on. And uh, so we basically have we have probability of electrons that uh, the dot is occupied by zero electron two, and for uh, by electron up and down single electron, and then we have this on diagonals. And now uh, this uh, spin language becomes very useful because it can transfer this uh, elements of this matrix into spin language. So so using this off diagonals elements, we can find that they are related to uh, as uh, as uh, X and Y component of the spin, and Z is just the difference between these two diagonal, and uh, the sum of them is the, the, the probability of that our dot is occupied by single electron. So, so practically we can we can uh, look at this density matrix as some matrix which contain information about charge and spin degrees of freedom. And uh, and okay, and now. Uh, we can uh, we can study the time evolution of the system using master equation or real equation in general way, and uh, so and we use this uh, famous technique from Carso. Uh, uh, it's a diagrammatic technique. If, in first order, it's quite simple because there is only single uh, tunneling line. And but what is nice is that after all this calculation, you can you can put all results to very simple formula. So this master equation is con converted to effective block equation. And this is very nice because some of us is familiar with block equation from, from, from university, from the uh, classes from university. And in some sense, the classical equation, so it's very easy to, to somehow analyze the physics and, and try to understand. 
So I will try to very briefly describe you what, what we got here. So, uh, so this is a term which describes the dynamics of, of the spin. So spin is a vector here. And uh, so we have some term which, uh, which due to the spin current to do some, um, we generate us uh, this spin. We have some spin relaxation, which is mainly to the uh, dynamic out of, of the dot. And then we have a term which looks like precession in some magnetic field. And, uh, and so what is the source of this magnetic field? And this magnetic field is exactly the same magnetic field or we, we, which we discussed in condo regime, which generates the, the condo splitting. So it is this uh, exactly the same magnetic field which coming from this part that we have for magnetic fields and, and so on. Okay, and but let's let's discuss the dynamics of it. So uh, so here is such a scheme, and again we have magnetization for left, magnetization for right leads. They are somehow shifted. And let's forget for a moment about this exchange field. So now, if we apply some bias, let's say higher for, for left lead, we inject spins to our system. And the direction of the spin, so we can call it spin accumulation, will be in Y direction. Because if you look at the projections of this two magnetization, they are anti-parallel in the Y direction. In the X direction, these two projections are parallel. So we already learned before that only for anti-parallelization we can get some spin injection to the system. So basically, the spin accumulation is Y direction. Okay, but now we have this exchange field due to the presence of ferromagnetic leads. It, it could be also some external magnetic field. And uh, this ex exchange field is, uh, in, if we have symmetric situation, it's, it's just in the, in the direction of the sum of these two vectors. So it's just between them. So it's perpendicular to the direction of spin accumulation. So now, if we inject a, a, a spin, it first point in y direction, but now, because we have some perpendicular magnetic field, the spin start to process. And, and, and in stationary situation, he is able to process by some average angle alpha. And what is important is that if, if it is start to process, then the angle between this spin of this accumulated spin and outgoing leads, so let's consider the current is flowing from left to right, as this effective angle becomes smaller, so it enhances the transport, so it's more easy for spin to escape. So it is, and, and this, exactly this process defines us somehow effectively the, this average uh, angle alpha. Okay, so is it, is it somehow clear? Can I? It's okay? Can I? So okay. So now uh, we can if, uh, we can keep this picture in mind, and then we can now look at uh, some transport characteristics. So uh, so first we uh, uh, we can look at the conductance uh, in linear response um, uh, as a function of gate voltage. So we see uh, this two charge uh, resonances. The temperature is quite uh, quite still quite high. So uh, the cool, uh, here the Coulomb blockade is not so not so strong. We have still some transport between these two peaks. So here here is we have two electrons on the dot. If we tune the position of level, here we have a single electron. Here is a zero, and at this point we have strong charge fluctuation and transition between two charge state. So basically, uh, uh, our dot has spin one just in this regime, and now we can calculate uh, the spin accumulation. On our dot, but since we are considering linear response, in linear response, the spin accumulation is just kind of spin sensibility in, in respect to some uh, external uh, bias. So it's uh, and uh, and we so we so here is just magnitude of the spin accumulation, we, uh, and the spin accumulation will be always in the x and uh, in the y uh, z plane. So we can just, uh, to, in order to find this amplitude, we can just make, make we need just add this to uh, two vectors, this y and z uh, component. So uh, so it looks like that. So it, it practically, it's present only if we have a single electron <coughs> of our dot. And we can also calculate this uh, effective angle for stationary situation. How how this spin equation is tilted from uh, the um, y uh, axis, and we see that. Uh, 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 
the spin accumulation, this angle is growing, and there is a change of sign of this angle. And the question is why is there is this change? And the change and this is the answer is because our exchange field. So I will come back to this slide, but I will just So this is some exchange field which is coming from this permagnetic leads. And what is important is that uh, this exchange field depends on the gate, what was confirmed both experimentally and, uh, and theoretically. And, um, and, and for symmetric Anderson model, at, at, uh, so this is here, at this point is symmetric Anderson model, this exchange field is to zero. And this is due to the fact that this exchange field is coming from electron light process, whole light process, and both of particles are coupled to different spin degrees of Eno. So if we have particle symmetry, this exchange field disappears. So even we have magnetic means, effectively nothing special is going on. And, and especially uh, and especially at this point, uh, this uh, uh, field is switched off and it's changed direction. So it is why this uh, the angle alpha change is the sign because then the if we tune out of this point, the spin accumulation is tilted, will be uh, tilted in different direction. And what, what's also important is that exactly at this point, we have no exchange field. So uh, this angle is going to zero. Uh, so spin accumulation is exactly in the y direction. And we have some maximum spin accumulation. And we have such a very narrow minimum here. And, and so in our discussion, we, we nearly do not discuss this minimum, but if we will now soon jump to the uh, strong coupling fixed point, exactly at this point will be condo physics, and then this, this small minimum will have very uh, very strong effect on the condo effect. And, but it will be, so, so it, 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 in the sequential regime, it is completely not relevant, but soon, um, and it's the experiment which I will make connection, Exactly, they will see this meaning which, which is related to the fact that we switch off uh, this exchange field, there is no precession, so this spin accumulation is very strong, so transport is very strongly blocked, especially if we consider full spin polarization. Okay, good. So now let's continue. And uh, so, what, what is important is that, uh, 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 so the question is how we can somehow measure the spin precession, because if we if we look at the, at the previous transparency, usually we can measure the contact task. And, uh, and, and here we see that this contact, if we change the direction of magnetization, if they are uh, anti parallel and full <coughs> speed, the, the task will be completely stopped. But uh, there is a shift in the different position, but it will be difficult to experiment to, to, to see directly. So it's better to look on the angular dependence of contact as a linear response as a function of the of the, of angle between two magnetizations. And we remember that for uh, uh, for a magnetic tunnel junction with outdoor, it was just this cosine behavior, it's a trivial which is coming from quantum mechanics. But now we have quantum dots, we have some precession. So effectively, we can modify this angular dependence of contact time. So here, this is this angular dependence. So with all dots, it will be cosine, so like, like this blue line. But now, since we have precession, we, uh, we effectively reduce spin accumulation. So because of the precession, it's more easy to spin go out. And because of that, we enhance the transport, uh, and we enhance the transport beyond this uh, cosine behavior. So it is somehow proved that we have some internal dynamics which help our transport and enhance the transport. So, the, so one, one of the check would be to measure the angular dependence and check the deviation from this cosine behavior. So it means that we do something with spin in, in, in this area. Yeah. So the, it's change direction and so on. Okay? And also another uh, uh, nice effect which we can predict, it is a situation uh, even, let's say, a little bit more simple, so we have quantum dots with two ferromagnetic leads, which are anti-parallel. And if they are anti-parallel, we ex the exchange field is not present anymore because it's compensated. So it's opposite for left and right leads. So effectively, there is no exchange field. 
but we can apply perpendicular magnetic field. And this dramatically, is, it, we can recover so-called Hanle effect. And the effect is like that. So now if we apply some current, uh, so or, or bias, let's, we, we can inject from left spin in this direction. And if we have fully spin polarized system, there will be no current because this electron is not able to go to other side. But now, because we have we have this magnetic field, if we will switch on magnetic fields, then we can generate precession of the spin, so he is able to go out. Yes. So now we can calculate the transport as a function of so this is just Larmor frequency, so it's just as a function of magnetic field. So we see that by uh, switching on this magnetic field, we can uh, we can increase the, the the transport in our our system because of coherent precession of, of spin, which we inject in the external magnetic field. And, uh, okay, and the question is why, why since there is a precession, so the spin should, so it should be some periodic signal in, in respect of magnetic field, but the problem is that we cannot control the lifetime of our electron here. It's given by gamma, and, uh, and so there is some average, average time, but practically it means that we have some distribution of time. So if we take the average about many different periods of, os of oscillation, we, we got just some, such, a, such a line. Yeah. So, so it is why we, so if we will be able to control precisely the, uh, the time which electrons spend or dot, we will see, and we will can be able to tune it, we will see some, really, uh, some, uh, some oscillation as a function of magnetic, as a function of magnetic field. Okay, good. And uh, so what is, what is nice that uh, uh, there is already experiment several years ago, not for single dot, but there was plenty of aluminum gra grains between two cobalt layers, and they applied, uh, so magnetization was in plane, but they applied weak magnetic field perpendicular to the, uh, uh, to the uh, to this, uh, plane, and they exactly see some effect which looks like what we use Discuss. Okay, and uh, what is also nice that uh, to see this effect will be enough to have one for magnetic leads and one normal, and still uh, in this system we are able to inject spin and uh, that it should be possible to see, but effect will be just weaker. So even even in this Dunlop setup, it should be possible to, to try to measure this. Effect. Okay, and now I will. Uh, I will uh, come to this point which I somehow advertised at, at the beginning about this mapping onto this uh, arm bombing and connection with some recent experiment. So just to remind you, so if we have this quantum dot with two ferromagnetic leads, there is uh, very similar uh, the Hamiltonian is map onto uh, arm bombing with two dots. Uh, and with some flux uh, inside. And this flux corresponds to, uh, to the angle between two uh, magnetizations. And, uh, and, uh, so, and I will make some connection with, with this year experiment, which was, it was uh, pointed out by, uh, by Rosa. And uh, we start to analyze this experiment. So uh, this experiment is in your ar arsenide quantum dot which is made from some wires, so we have two electrodes here. And what, what is unusual here is that G factor is extremely strong. So because the speed orbit is very, very strong, so they can, what they can do, they can make uh, uh, easy degeneracy between uh, two different levels, but with the same spin index. So, so if you look here, you see that there's some degeneracy, but with the same spin index. And, uh, and what is also important here is that, uh, uh, so basically they, uh, here they have two level system, and these levels, since they have the same spin index, they are coupled to the same the speed degree, uh, to the same electronic state on both sides. And so it, this is spinless model. Uh, but what is also important is that in this system, just by chance, the, uh, and it looks like it is somehow experimentally uh, relevant, they have different parity for two levels. So there is, there is degeneracy of two levels which have, which have different parity. So it means that effectively they have, uh, for this uh, tunneling matrix, uh, element is negative. So it corresponds to some, some finite flux in, in this system. 
but it also maps to some uh, to some anti-parallel orientation of these two magnetizations. So somehow, in, in this system, we have a situation like that, that we have like pseudo spin because we have it is very strong magnetic field, so we have only one spin component, and we have uh, ferromagnetic leads which are not exactly, but they are nearly anti-parallel. So so we have also this exchange here, uh, field here. But in this pseudo spin space, we have also um, we have also spin accumulation between these two levels and, and so on. And what is important that and what is unusual? So if 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 there will be no parity effect, then one can and and if let's say there will be two spin components, then one can expect just the condo effect here. And what they de de what they detect? They de so here, for example, is the condo effect. It's uh, uh, or is it clear? Yeah, it's some singular to triplet probably in transition, yes, because it's single triplet. So we, here we just see single line. But if we look here at this cross section, this C3, we see that this there is some double line structure, or there is a single line with some very strong deep. And uh, and this is something unusual. And then we realize that because of this mapping. We, we are somehow in similar situation like here, and we are somehow sitting here, and because at this point, exchange field is switched off, or there is no any effective magnetic field in the system, we have very we have anti orientation, so we have very strong spin accumulation, and, it, and locally here, the transport very strongly blocked. So it's in terms of, of this ring, it means that we have some interference, but if we would change the occupancy of these two levels, it means that we have some spin operation which are not able to process and, and it block uh, uh, a transport. But in fact, to make connection with this picture, we will need to look at the cross-section like that. Not, not like that, but it still will be some, 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 some deep. Okay, so, so, and, and, uh, so, so what, what is nice that it is probably possible to, to exp expect this uh, spin precession or the spin dynamics behavior also in, in condo regime. So and this is not trivial, and we want to try to calculate it. And so there is already some calculation, but uh, there is, there, they don't use this interpretation in terms of spin accumulation. Which, could, which is quantity which could be measured, so it's, it's real physics, and, and, and we hope to add also some knowledge to this uh, uh, discussion. Okay, and uh, so I have time. Okay, so now very briefly I will explain you uh, some also some noise calculation because since in our system uh, we have some dynamics, maybe it would be also nice to look how it looks like. Uh, current noise, because then maybe we can also see a frequency which corresponds to larval frequency, some dy internal dynamics of our system. It is, it's very close to interest of Ramon, and, and he also has a very nice paper on, on this field. And uh, so we, we use this uh, diagrammatic technique in order to calculate it, and so here's some description how we can find uh, uh, all this propagator for some finite frequency, and of course, ma the master equation is, is, is uh, only got in zero frequency, and we can calculate uh, uh, fre frequency dependent current. But um, it is also using this approach, we can calculate current current uh, correlation function, so it is the standard definition, and we can make Fourier transform and go order to get this current current noise as a function of. Uh, frequency and in this diagrammatic technique the general equation looks like that but since we are it is, we had also very nice discussion uh, last uh, yesterday today with, with Ramon that if you if you consider first order transport uh, and if you consider some low low uh, and omega which is of order of gamma so Practically, uh, the only relevant term, which is frequency dependent, is this one. If we want to consider the special limit, and uh, so it's so then uh, this calculation is much more simple because only frequency dependent is, is this this part, and all other are not frequency dependent. However, in our regime, it's, it's just like calculation expansion, and. Uh, 
we consider low frequency mini, but also some higher frequency mini. And I think that in low frequencies there is a lot of charge fluctuation, so so it's much more difficult to interpret. But if we will look at frequency regime which corresponds to to the Larmor frequency, and if we apply some external magnetic field in order to make this uh, precession much stronger than gamma, then we get very nice clear uh, signal, and which which basically. Now, uh, so we have, we have a situation like that, that we have two ferromagnetic rings, we, we change the angle between them, and magnetic fields applied in particular to, to directions. So now, depending on, on the angle between the two spins, uh, we have a little bit different type of the uh, signal, so it could be like emission line or absorption line or dispersion line, but, but, it's, but basically means that we have some, some spin dynamics which is going on here, and now, depending on this uh, angle between, let's say, injector and detector, we, we see a little, little bit different phase of, of this uh, signal. And so, so we see, and, and here, it's just charge, uh, uh, it's, it's the current noise of the charge. So, so using the uh, electric current measurements, we can get some information about spin. And we also perform some calculation. We calculate also the uh, spin spin correlation function, and uh, and uh, and we found that there is a single relation between this uh, 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 current noise and the spin spin correlation function. So it's mean. So in our system, because we have the spin dependent leads and spin dependent transport, we we can trans translate the spin information to the charge information, and then by measuring transport, we can somehow read out the spin information. Yeah. So. What we see is that uh, there is some direct relation between the spin current noise and the, uh, the Fourier transform of the spin spin correlation function. So, by, by so locally, by measuring the transport in our model, we can somehow uh, get some information about the dynamics of our system. And we can also. Do I, do I have some? Okay. And so now. We can also look uh, to look at some connection to the standard uh, magnetic resonance uh, setup and make some comparison and try to find the harmonics. Because look, here we don't apply any microwaves. Yes, we just measure the current and special frequency. So we have some current which oscillates in time. We make Fourier transform of it and we see that there is some frequency in our our. And so the question is how it works. What is the interpretation? So we can make some connection to magnetic resonance in order to find some simple intuition why it is like that. And uh, so, so here is the typical NMR or ESR signal. And so we have some external magnetic field in the Z direction and so our spin process. And now if we apply some uh, uh, pulse, which is uh, pi 2, so we can rotate the spin to the X direction and then there will be some free induction in the case, so the spin will start to process, and uh, but due to relaxation process, uh, the, this uh, first this in plane component will decay, and then uh, so there is two the relaxation processes t t described by T2 and T1, and then this process this after such a pause, the, the system will relax to to, to the, the, that direction again. So so if we apply such a um, uh, a pi, pi 2 pulse, and we will detect by different detector uh, this, uh, this induction, uh, free induction signal. We will see that, that there is some oscillation which decay in, in, uh, in time, and if we make a Fourier transform of it, we will get the resonance signal at uh, proper uh, frequency. And so, what is nice is that uh, we can see that maybe the noise is kind of continuous wave experiment. But what is funny is that uh, it looks like that it's more easy. It, it, we should probably look at it as a more as a, some pulse experiment because we can uh, make such a picture that uh, 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 so because we consider this noise, it is like that that uh, we have our two-level system. We have external magnetic fields, of, so that we have some splitting. But now, if we in, if we consider some finite frequency in our system, we have some field. And we can uh, absorb some boson or emit some boson to this field for just for a while, and then reabsorb it. And 
So, so, uh, so basically, because we can absorb this energy for a while or give it later back, do, especially during tunneling process, we can get the degeneracy of this to level, and then this procession is uh, effectively possible. <coughs> so, so then it means that, I, uh, that it means that. Uh, uh, so this it is because of that the situation is more similar to this, let's say, two pulse experiment where first we rotate this z component to the x y plane, then there is this free induction decay, and then we make some measurements. So, so now it's also possible to understand that by changing the angle, we have somehow change the angle between uh, uh, injector and detector, and, the, and because of the uh, we get different signal. So. So using this picture, we see that this is more similar situation to, to, to the past techniques that the continuous way. Uh, okay, so maybe at this point, since my talk is over, I will come to conclusion. So uh, very, very briefly, I talk, I show you today some uh, 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 some nice efforts for quantum dot coupled to ferromagnetic leads in sequential tunneling and weak coupling regime. Where, due to the fact that we have spin polarization in the leads, we can eject spin. We ha we, and if we, uh, and there is some exchange field, but we can also apply an external magnetic field, so we can we can see some uh, dynamics of the spin, and we, we can see some effect on transport, and even there is some measurements which somehow confirm it. But also, we can expect in some high frequency noise to, to see some uh, uh, signal. And what is, what is important is that uh, basically our skin is to level system, so it could also map to the bone ring with, with two dots or, or some qubit or two, 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 two dot system, and practically the same physics one can expect in, in all these uh, 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 systems. But what is important is that depending on the system, we can more easy or more difficult to measure some particular quantity. Quantity. So some measurements probably is more easy to do in, in let's say, spin. Uh, if we consider spin the degree of you know, some experiment will be more easy to make uh, using this quantum dots and so on. So, so then there is some differences, but basically the Hamiltonian or, or physics is something similar. Okay, so at this point I do that. For any projection, and then uh, then this uh, connection with with this current is only if you cho choose a correlation between projection S L and S R, yes, because because then you have the same angle. But practically, you you, you need to, you can calculate for I think for any any two directions. And and okay, and, and this is somehow simple because. You can consider, uh, you can describe the spin as a log equation, which is somehow classical. Yeah. So, so from, from, from a point of view, so all this uh, correlation, uh, uh, all this correlation means that, uh, that um, uh, it's, it's just some average information. It's not measurements from, you know, from single measurements, but it's some, it's, it's on the level of log equation. So it means that you have some big ensemble, and if you measure uh, all this ensemble you will get some average information. Yes. So, so on, on the level of our equation, the spin is, is a classical uh, object. Yeah, I mean, it's not only that the current is in this so the spin language contains all these spin projections, right? Mm, uh, so oh, okay, okay, okay. So this, so I can calculate any spin projection, but for some it could be zero. Yes. Yes. So and then you you can play with the angles here. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So, so pro probably if you if you consider some z component of spin, you got just z zero. So, yeah. In principle, you can calculate, but you just get some or following zero. Yes, I would like to ask about the change field. This is a magnetic field coming from the ferromagnetic fields. Is this kind of inhomogeneous magnetic field? 
Okay, so so it is not straight field, so it's not like it's not straight. Field. Yeah, so if you have a piece of magnet, usually you, you feel that there is some magnetic field outside it because you have some you know if you put another magnet, but we are not talking about this field. So here we consider that uh, the straight field is very weak, and uh, so all this exchange field is electronic origin. So and it somehow so Rosa and Daniel has also several papers on it. So it's very spectacular if you consider condo physics because then you see really the splitting of condo physics. And the mechanism is like that: that if you have uh, so basically you have uh, your dot has this level up and down. And if you consider normal metal, then this usually if you have coupling to the to this fermionic bath. These two levels are a little bit of a normalized position. They are they are not they are not anymore uh, like in the, uh, the couple dot. But if you couple to something, they, they get this level the both level are a little bit shifted. And and uh, so it's it is I think it's similar effect to the lamp shift if you consider some atom and coupling to 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 photons. You could you have uh, to the fluctuation of. Yes, and this is, so this effect is somehow analogical. So we, you, your single level is coupled to, to, to many degrees of freedom and it gets some organization. And now it's the same way. Right? I mean, it's not an analog. Yes, it's exactly the same. The master equation is the royal part of it. Yeah. yeah. And it's also one loop collection and it's also here. So it's, uh, and this is just being selected. Oh, yes, and now if you have and now if you have ferromagnetic lead, this effect is slightly different from up and down, and because of that you get the speed. And so this is one message, but another message is also that that but each of be barrier and this should be symmetry. Yes, it's full, so it's fulfilled. It's a good point. It's fulfilled. Uh, so there's no, no. Here, can you see yeah. this picture is symmetric. So, so he, in this position you have particle symmetry, and this path is asymmetric to the respect to this one. So it's mean, so it's mean, and basically the, the physical picture is like that: that, that if, if you consider electrons with spin up, uh, they are coupled both to spin up and down, but to uh, to uh, to uh, to holes with spin up because this electron can go out to to spin up. And with electron with, uh, with holes with up and electron down, because if, if you have a, a, a dot with single electron, this electron can go out, but also, and then the virtual state is zero capacity. But it's also possible that another electron enter and there will be double capacity. So, so this level is coupled somehow both to, to electrons up to holes up and uh, and electron or opposite an electron down. And now, if you have particle symmetry, you have no exchange here. You have perfect symmetry. And now, if you if you tune from this point, one of these guys are stronger than other, and you have splitting in positive or negative. And uh, only one more. Thing. And uh, the physics should depend on the distance between the other. Yeah. Yes. So it depends because you have you have the gamma here. Yes. So so the magnitude of the field depends on on the strength of the coupling. So if you make the coupling smaller, this exchange field will be smaller. So so here exactly you have tangent matrix element squared in this gamma. So this field become weaker. So if you decouple your dot, this field will be zero. No, but you will do the same coupling but with longer distance. No, but uh, okay. like making the dot larger. Uh, so uh, so let's say, but if. Uh, uh, so I would say like that, if your dog is in ballistic regime and you have some level of separation, then the size doesn't matter somehow. Because you have just one good uh, wave function to describe your system. So I show you already that you can make a quantum dog which behave like artificial atom, which is made of carbon nanotube. So it could be even, I don't know, 300 nanometers large. And it's still you see single levels and all this behavior is still valid. So, so, but the problem would be if, if you have some scattering and, and, and your dot will be in diffusive regimes and all this picture break down. But as long as you can consider that you have some distant energy levels and so on, this picture is, is correct. So in diffusive regime, it will, it will, URI will not work. So, 
So this is only I'm thinking of this precession effect and then the distance should somehow be important. Okay, but 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 so first we consider we consider we consider we coupling. So it means that uh, electron entering the dot and it's a relatively long time before going out. Yes? So you can say that from point of view, I don't know, some charge distribution he is sitting somehow it's meaning that it's not like that he's flying is it the time which we need to, to get some equilibrium is extremely short compared to the time which we spend on the top in this format yes. but in principle you're right that if you consider a very uh, huge current or, uh, and, and if you have a strong coupling then uh, I don't know all this dynamics internal can play a role yes you can you can generate some from the from an Anderson impurity, one can extend, understand the exchange theory in these terms of the yeah. uh, What about quantum impurity? Uh, okay, so this, uh, uh, so this uh, exchange field is due to the uh, uh, one loop, it's a one loop correction due to the quantum charge fluctuation. So then it means that practically in condo uh, model, you, they are not exist because you have no, no charge with this of it. Okay. So, okay. So, okay. So, the essence like that: that if you, if you, if you consider that your uh, condo model is corresponds to symmetric Anderson model and infinite U, then it means that from this picture that there is no exchange here. Okay. But if you have just to darkness band, which has different density of states for spin up and spin down, and you couple it. Both some oh, so okay, again, so according to if, this picture, you would expect no effect at all. Yeah, if, if, if you have perfect spin hole uh, symmetry in the beads, if there will be any uh, spin hole asymmetry, then immediately you will get something. Yes. Yeah. Uh, because then, then this point is somehow shifted yeah, to the left and right. How would you describe that? Now you can really talk about it. Okay, so so I, I think. think you don't have charge anymore. Yes. Yeah. So, okay, so so I can I can yeah. The physics is the same. So okay, so I can uh, so, so I can explain. So usual strategies like that. that if you, what you do, you first on level of Anderson model, you integrate yeah. out. Yeah. Okay. I understand. Uh -huh. that. No, but, but how to is, if you start from a uh, condo like model, what would happen? Would you still get the same effect? So my no. question is about the uh, yes. commutation of doing this. Can you start? I mean the interpretation. Probably you start with the thermal contact and you make some uh, super transformation, you get this exchange field. No, no, but if you want to start with the condo like So, so I think if, if you start with the condo. Yeah, you just start with the condo like model with the thermal And then you. What do you get? So, 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 uh, yes. so in some sense, it's exactly what we get if we, if we, if we put symmetric under some model. And uh, and we make shifter group transformations. Then we have we have uh, this uh, uh, we have an isotropic condo model, but you can find that all, everything is flow to this uh, isotropic condo model. Yes, yeah, it's fine. No, no, my question is different. This exchange, it's the presence of you exchange field. You take an isotropic condo model, completely isotropic, standard yeah. one, but you take uh, a couple of bed which has different density states. Okay, so then you are sitting here, and then there should be no no exchange field. This is not clear to me. Why? Why? Yes. Why do you say so? In principle, you can be in a situation which is not there, right? Uh, okay, but okay, but but so so okay, so so then uh, in the language of of two stage scaling class super dark transformation, you need to put some uh, some effective field to the quantum Hamiltonian to account this. Okay, but you would like to get this on the Okay, if you do not do that. Okay, so then, uh, and if, if you have all symmetries in your model, then you, you should have no exchange field. This is the answer. But this okay. is very uh, Yeah, so, okay, I, I look, I, I, I discussed with some big guys in the field, yes, and they would say, guys, you have, you have stone and splitting, which is of order of one electron of all. There will be no condo effect with thermodynamic leads, yes? When, so we, we, give, we, we made the story, and there was no experiment, so I discussed with some Russian guys, and they said, no, it's impossible, guys, yes? You have so much heating, which is of order of one electron of volts, you will never get the condo physics in the system, yes? And also, in, in heavy thermal system, you have strong competition between 
for a magnetic coordinate control and, and they, they don't exist, yes? So, so at the beginning was such a reaction. Yes? But then experiment came and, and, you know, they even confirm all, all this uh, gate, uh, gate dependence of this exchange field. So this, this dependence people really see in experiment, yes? And they also find this degeneracy point that it's no exchange. So you have ferromagnetic leads and by tuning gate voltage, you have completely no any exchange. I understand, because you're really pure to understand, like, so my question is really academic. Okay, okay. 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 okay.